So here we'll go over a concept that you've probably encountered before, and it's known as the central dogma. What it says is that DNA is transcribed into RNA, which is then translated into proteins. And even though you've encountered this before, when you're studying for the MCAT, it's very important to really have this clearly in your mind so that you can look at each of these components and figure them out sort of in isolation and in how they fit in with the big picture. Because there are a lot of enzymes and components and ribosomes and different pieces that participate in all of these steps. And they can be very confusing. You have RNA polymerases and DNA polymerases. You have promoters and transcription factors. You have tRNA and mRNA. And the best way to organize all that information in your mind is to think of everything in terms of the central dogma and the steps that go on as this process advances to this and as the RNA is then translated into protein. But notice here that we've also added replication, DNA replication, because oftentimes students will confuse that with, for example, transcription. And it's important to recognize that this is also a separate component that involves its own enzymes and its own protein factors that also participate. And so in general, the transition from DNA to RNA, it's called transcription. And it involves an RNA polymerase, it involves some transcription factors, then you have to splice the primary transcript and then process it by adding a cap and a tail to enable it to then reach the cytoplasm. So transcription has many different components of its own. And then when the RNA goes out to the cytoplasm, that's when the translation process begins. And that's when your processed mRNA is then translated into proteins in a system that involves ATP usage and some tRNAs that enable you to link your mRNA codons with the proteins that are being built from amino acids. And then replication has its own set of factors. It has helicases that unwind. It has single-strand binding proteins that help stabilize the two parent template strands. And it involves DNA polymerases, primers, and different components like that. And so while you're working through all of these, it's important to keep the central dogma in mind. And we'll have videos going through each step in this process. And if you then are able to isolate these three different things as three separate processes, then you'll have a much bigger picture understanding and it will help you answer questions where they might try to trick you into using a DNA replication enzyme to answer a transcription problem or something like that. So know the central dogma, recognize that it is distinct from DNA replication, which is something you see with a lot of cell division, and then once we do that, then you can start to put in all of the pieces and understand how all of these parts work together and in concert. And you'll be able to then get a big picture of the cell. And you'll see how transcription, for example, occurs in the nucleus. And then the end step of transcription is to produce an mRNA transcript that is free to then move into the cytoplasm and it can be translated into proteins in ribosomes which are themselves made out of ribosomal RNA. And then this will help you understand the endoplasmic reticulum and the various pieces that go into the translation of RNA into protein. And so always have the central dogma in mind. And if you have this big picture in mind, as well as the replication components, then all of the pieces will start to fall into place and you'll be able to understand the much bigger picture of how DNA is useful not only in reproducing itself in order to produce daughter cells through mitosis and things like that, but also how DNA can be useful in producing the proteins that your cells need to survive.